We say goodbye to excessive heat and hello to some heavy rainfall, some dangerous thunderstorms for some off mainly to the north. What's happening in San Antonio, moderate to heavy showers, all so beneficial. Let's get right to the radar. In fact, the farther south you go, once you get into the valley and into Mexico, you can see those are the strongest storms on radar. In fact, you see how that little bow echo is forming? Those are going to be winds between 60 and 70 miles per hour heading down south. It'll probably be south of even Corpus Christi. There's also a severe thunderstorm watching effect there until 2 a.m. All right, brand new warning just came out. It's this one, a really long, far-reaching polygon of a severe thunderstorm warning. It's going to take in a good portion of Comal County right over Canyon Lake as this big supercell drop southeast right now at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. So I'm looking at the hail cores and, and I'm encouraged in the fact that we're seeing them shrink a bit. And what these storms are doing is what's called pulsing. They'll strengthen and then they'll weaken a bit. They'll strengthen again and they'll weaken a bit. Very similar to a living and breathing organism. They just take in this big inhale of warm, moist air, and that's that updraft, and the storm builds, and then it's an exhale, and that downdraft, and that is what creates more storms. Almost that little mini outflow goes into this very warm, unsta unstable air and creates more of these storms. All right, so a couple of these warnings. The one I just showed you, that large polygon, until 11. So it's going to cover Comal, even southern Hayes County, just coming in south of Kyle and San Marcos. Now notice again, Fredericksburg's hail core really shrinking. So when you see that gray, that's going to be about marble size hail. But the bigger concern with this cell, and again, then now we're just looking at the hail cores. I took out all the rainfall just to look at hail, and you can see how much it's diminishing as these storms move east. What's not diminishing? Wind speeds. Look at this, 56 miles per hour live right inside that cell that's crossing over northeastern Kendall County and heading right towards Canyon Lake. So if you're in Canyon Lake, the wind's heading towards you right now at about 60 miles per hour. I'd be more concerned with wind and getting anything outside, inside, and safe and secure before it's going to go airborne. Much bigger threat on wind than hail at this point for you. These storms have a history of flooding, so we could start seeing some flash flood warnings marching east along this same line. Same storms, they're still a little more violent, but because of the amount of water they put down, they're coming down about three to three and a half inches per hour. Now, going out I-10 into the heart of this action, I would say right about here last time we talked to him is Ryan Shopton, the Ken's 5 Live weather truck. Let's go out to him live. Ryan, whereabouts are you now, and what are you experiencing out on the roads? Yeah, hey there, Bill. We're probably on that southwestern side of that squall line you were just referencing on reflectivity on radar. Probably about 10 miles out of comfort between Bernie and Comfort on I-10. You can't see much because of two things. Obviously, it's dark, but also the visibility is extremely low. The rainfall is coming down heavy. It's probably up to about one to two inches per hour where we're at. And again, on that southwestern side of that uh, quasi squall line that's moving stuff uh, east northeast across Kendall County and about to cross over 281. So we're going to start moving northeast and just trying to catch up onto the lightning. But things are starting to thin out here, at least farther north towards Comfort. But again, we're on that back side. Um, we looked at velocity. Wind speeds were probably on the range of about 15 to 25 miles an hour. We've had to reduce our speed quite a bit. Driving on I-10 westbound, uh, again, towards Comfort, uh, probably down to 40 miles an hour. A lot of the folks that are on the roads right now either stopping on the side of the road or reducing their speed to around that range, 30 to 40 miles an hour. And occasionally you'll see the lightning. But as you saw on the radar, Bill, that large lightning cluster is northeastern Kendall County, um, and that squall line is almost moving towards 35, where that thing, uh, that's going to be the main concern for wind damage and some strong heavy rain in the next couple hours. Yeah, be very careful. If you guys have to pull over and wait out some of that heavier rain, like we saw a couple of those vehicles with the hazards on, please do so. In fact, I always suggest that put hazards on when you're driving in this kind of heavy rain, coming down about three to three and a half inches per hour. So the pockets still to come into the city are going to be heavy at times. We're not looking at anything severe in San Antonio right now, but it's close. We go down farther south. Here's Encinal, right down I-35 towards Laredo. These were some monster cells, and you can see the amount of hail 
also decreasing, but this is that bow echo I was talking about. Whenever you see this shape on a squall line where it kind of bows out like that, those are going to be winds between 60 and 70 miles per hour. Where did these storms come from? Well, they all broke off on the dry line out west and had enough muscle to move this far to the east. Of course, all the conditions that were in place waiting for it, you know how humid it's been. I mean, it's been a tropical air mass. Now you can see the storms go through about the midnight hour and by morning, everything is east. We get partly cloudy skies low to mid 70s upwards of about 91 to 92 for tomorrow's high at least I think we go into the mid 90s again and we could see some more showers develop by tomorrow night it's mainly going to be off to the east but we still have some chances this is not the only night seven day forecast 30 percent as we get to tomorrow night as the same is for Thursday night during the day I think we're dry maybe a 10 to 20 percent chance covers it but 40 percent chance should be the last of it Friday night first weekend of June is going to be dry with highs in the mid 90s.